I don't need anything. Thank you very much. It's wonderful to be back here in New York, Citoire. Oh, God, it's been a while. Here at Reno Sweeties. Now, you may have noticed, Waylon is no ventriloquist, and I am no fucking dummy. <laughs> now, with that out of the way, I'd like to tell you, since I've seen you last, I've been on a lot of things. I've been on Andy Williams, I've been on Don Ho, and I've been on Quaaludes. <laughs> The way things are shaking out there in L.A., I'd rather be quacking than quaking, I'll tell you. Oh, God, Hollywood. Can't stand that town. Everything out there has got a Queen Anne front and a Mary Anne behind. But I'll tell you what I really think of Hollywood C.A.L. Hit it, Gary! Ee-hi! Shovel all the coal in. Gotta keep it rolling. Take me back to Manhattan. Take me back to New York. I love the east side, the west side, the north side, and the south side. So take me back. Just like Ann Margaret, I fell right down on my beaver. Woo! Let me take this thing off. I'm hotter than a half fuck fox in a forest fire. I don't want you to think I've gone too Hollywood on you. I bought this Atlanta Turner's garage sale. I found a crab in it the other night. I heard the best way to get rid of the crabs. A Jewish friend of mine told me, he says, Madam, what you do? Get you some sour cream, smear it on your privates, <laughs> then you scream, party time! <laughs> Little buggers, he didn't get so fat, they fall off. <laughs> get that down there. Oh, I've got to tell you a lot of things. Back here in New York, this is where I met my good friend and traveling companion, Maud. Met her at the Port Authority. She's about the best authority on Port I ever met, as a matter of fact. <laughs> She used to be in show business till her donkey died. <laughs> Never got that act out of Tijuana. But anyhow, Maud's not too bright. I bought her a vibrator for Christmas and she knocked out four teeth the first day. <laughs> We're uh, We're traveling together now. I keep her along, you know. She's backstage, as a matter of fact, you know, pressing my nylons. She loves that busy work. I'm sorry I'm a little late getting out here this evening, but I was backstage myself with my fiancé. That's French for the guy I'm fucking now. <laughs> Honey, those Frenchmen are so wishy-washy, you don't know if you're gonna get wished to washed. Doesn't much matter, though, once I get my wish, I usually wash. <laughs> he is gorgeous, though. Six foot four, blonde, blue-eyed, 19. I don't think that's a bad IQ for a guy 17 years old, do you? <laughs> oh, Maud told me the other night, says, Madam, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Dating that young kid, you should be more careful. It could be fatal. I said, oh, what the hell, Maud? If he dies, he dies. <laughs> <laughs> Maud and I have gotten a wonderful apartment out there in Hollywood. It wasn't furnished, so I phoned Abby Rents. They'll rent anything. I've done the whole apartment in party supplies and sick room fixtures. <laughs> I'm telling you, I hate sleeping in that iron lung. <laughs> Maud loves hers, though. She doesn't even have to worry about breathing. Just plugs it in the wall there. <laughs> I do like the little mirrors up over our faces. I can put my makeup on in the morning when I get out of bed. Well, the other day, the doorbell rang, and I was lying there in my lung, reading the joys of something or other. About that time, the doorbell rang. So I pulled myself out of my tank, <laughs> went to the door, opened it, <clears throat> There's a Hare Krishna guy standing there. Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Krishna. <laughs> Aren't they attractive people? I love the way they dress. The little caftans and tennis shoes. Very trendy. Or at least standing there shaking a cup in my face. I said, I suppose you want a donation. He says, yes. I said, I'll give you $100 if you learn a new fucking song. <laughs> Oh, Gary, you know, have you seen all those new uh, television shows they've been putting on the air? My God, all those quiz shows and everything. They've got a new one now called Name That Fume. I got 
more on it as a contestant. What it is, they bring this little plastic booth out on the stage. Then they put Maud inside and strapped her down to a chair. She looked like Susan Haywood on I Want to Live. <laughs> then they turned the, the gas on. Shh! She took one whiff. Oh, shit! He says, you're right for $200! <laughs> <laughs> and oh, my. The other night, Maud says, uh, Madam, I haven't seen one Hollywood star since we've been out here in Hollywood. I said, well, let's go to the Brown Derby for breakfast. <laughs> so we get there very early in the morning sit down. I leaned over the table. I said, no more. For God's sake, don't order a Coca-Cola no matter what you do this early in the morning. They either know you're an alcoholic or a southerner. And I don't know which one's worse. About that time, the waitress came by our table. Maud looked up. She says, two double martinis. I said, oh, screw it. I'll have the same. <laughs> so while we're waiting for the drinks to get there, I thought I'd go to the powder room and powder my nose, which takes a little doing. So coming out of the powder room, I bumped into none other than Frank Sinatra. I said, oh, Mr. Sinatra, I just love your ooby dooby doos Listen, would you like to do an old gal a favor? No, not that, Frank. Put that back. <laughs> On second thought, could I see that again? <laughs> <laughs> now, put that back. Listen, I'm here with a good friend of mine. She's sitting up there at the table. You see her? My name is Madam. If you would just come by the table and speak to me, it would just tickle me to death. Would you do that? He said he would. Well, I went back and sat down with Maud. A little while later, Frank came bouncing across the floor there. Maud looked up. She says, uh, who is that? I said, well, put on your fucking glasses and look. <laughs> that looks like Frank Sinatra. I said, it is, and he happens to be a very close friend of mine. So when he came by the table, he says, hello, madam. I said, oh, fuck off, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. Oh, screw them all but six and save them for pallbearers. <laughs> After that, Maud and I headed up to the Hyatt House Hotel there to catch the Grey Line bus tour of Hollywood. If you're not gray when you get on it, you are when you get off. <laughs> so we're standing outside there reading the little newsstands, you know, the newspapers in the stands. Oh, Maud, look at the headline on this. Bugs Bunny admits he's a homosexual. <laughs> I guess now we really know what's up, Doc. <laughs> that time the bus got there so we hopped on got to the back of the bus I said to Maud you sit behind me so we both can get a window seat so I'm sitting there preening and carrying on straightening out little ear screws about that time this very large lady sat down beside me I recognized her I'd seen her face on food stamps <laughs> she was doing all the right things for herself long blonde turd curls with black roots little yellow and orange print dress there White socks, brogans, and a big bag of burritos over here to her left. She kept fishing into the bag there and throwing the burritos down her throat. Well, I looked over about halfway through the trip. She had finished the burritos and was getting a little gassy. <laughs> she was sitting there moving around, you know, doing it cheek to cheek, cheek to cheek. Well, I noticed every time the bus would get to the top of the hill, the light would turn to red, the bus would stop and put its air brakes on. Shh! Well, I knew what she had in mind. She's gonna use that as a cover-up. Well, I looked back over at her. She was all reared up in the seat there, ready for the next light. The bus gets to the top of the hill. The light turns to green. The bus goes right on through. Well, she caught one. I have never the woman in front of me yelled, Earthquake! I looked back. She was still fighting a dress down. The dress go up that high since Marilyn Monroe's in Seven Year Itch. I turned around to Maud. I said, Maud, unless something thrilling happens to us at the farmer's market, this is going to be the highlight of this fucking tour. <laughs> I took her over. Maud, I took her to Rome recently to see the Pope of the Vatican. If you can, can. So we're coming out of the Vatican there, shooing the pigeons. <laughs> church people. <laughs> Maud, get that one. It's got a message tied to her foot. Get it. Hold on to her. Bring her down to the ground. Get her. God, she's bitches. And <laughs> kill her. <laughs> Think she's dead? Okay, you get the message off her foot. Oh, I don't want to touch her. She may have mites. Oh, I don't know. I've never seen a mite. My mother always used to tell me about mites. Get the message off her foot, Maud. 
I don't know how you'd catch a mite. I guess if you fucked a pigeon, you got him. Now give me that message. <laughs> Surrender Dorothy. <laughs> I don't have to tell you the Pope didn't like me a lot. No, he likes big tits. So I'm sauntering around the Palazzo there, oh, so grand. <laughs> Walked over to this little card stand. They were selling pictures of the Pope with flitter shit all over his face. <laughs> Isn't that attractive? About that time, this covey of nuns swooped by. One little novice turned to the Mother Superior. She says, oh, Mother Superior, what are we going to do about the abortion bill? She says, why, pay it, of course. <laughs> so we're traveling on up the street there. Looked up the hill, there was a lady headed towards us, one of her tits hanging out. Maroon. Maud, do you see that? The lady up on the hill, do you see her? Well, put on your fucking glasses and look. Do you see her now? Well, she's got a tit hanging out of this. No, not that one, the one with the tit hanging out. <laughs> I wonder if she knows. I think I'll go tell her. So I raced over to her in the best Italian that I could muster. I said, ah, uh, quel breste, el expose. Ah, <laughs> uh, did you know you have a tit hanging out? She says, oh my God, I must have left my baby on the bus. <laughs> You know what, Waylon? We've really seen it all. The ups and downs of life. Do what? I'm sorry, they're giving us a little signal over there. Do what? There's one more? All right. You're going to edit this shit, aren't you? I certainly hope so. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> you know, Waylon, we've really seen the ups and downs of life. But it wasn't the ups and downs that bothered me so badly. It was the jerks in between. <laughs> Looking back, I'd say that on the whole, that it's been heaven, mostly heaven. Though between the peaks we pit our pit our two. I have never lost my chin's up point of view. Cause it's heaven even in the pits with you. Ah, Sometimes it's been rotten. But we've gotten through the turkeys to the hits. Now with all the lords and ladies at the Ritz, we rub elbows, knees and noses, toes and tits. AMP to Franklin Simons, we've been there and back a lot. Still I wear my summer diamonds, summer diamonds, summer not. Madam, how old are you? Can you keep a secret? Certainly. So can I. Listen, tell me, <laughs> how do you keep so young? Oh, no, that's a trick. Well, tell us your trick, you tell us all your other tricks. <sighs> Wash your mouth. I'll tell you if you kiss me. Get it over here. Hardly worth the trouble. Secret, what's my secret? When I tell you, you may laugh, but by and by! Oh, I think she just snapped a garter. Whoop. You will find there's no one cleverer than I. Here it is, Waylon. My magic formula to a long and healthy life. Just three little words. What? Well, tell these people they want to know. Oh, my God. I swore on a stack of Maria Uspenskaya's I'd never tell. You promised. I promise? Yes. Here it is. Keep on breathing, and you'll never, never die! That's right, folks. Just suck it in and push it out. It's kept me alive as long as I've been around. And I promise you this, if you do just that one thing for me, then you'll never, 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 never Why? Give me a fucking drink!
<laughs> Here, quick. Oh, good, you got it from the gun. Mm. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. How I never drink till I got off stage. A little bit too. Listen, but this feels like old times. Yes. It's about time you Sitting got... Sitting in a bar drinking, getting snopped. It's about time you got your ass back to New York. I love New York. Do you miss it? I certainly do. I can't get hold of California. Why? I don't know. It's hard to find peace and love in a city that knows no God. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't it as wild as everybody says it is out in L.A.? Um, how about you, Will? What do you think? What? How do I like it? Yeah. I'm with Madam. <laughs> Incessantly. Oh, Are we yeah. bored of being together so much? No, no. She's my saving grace. You tell me something real weird once. You said that Baltimore was the wildest city you've ever been to. Well, it's fun party town. It's Why? a wonderful party town. They don't have parties in L.A.? Oh, well, they do, but not as sick. <laughs> I really not get into that. Well, and what are you, what is your, how does your family react to all of this? They're seeing you on Hollywood Squares all the time. Well, they don't, the Andy Williams show doesn't even get to uh, Dawson. My mother's put an aerial on her roof that'll reach Alaska. So she has friends over that watch the show, you know. <laughs> and how's the new laughing going? Um, it's going very well. Yeah? You like mm -hmm. it? I love it. It's going to be a big thing. I got to ask you this question. I got to ask Madam this question. But it, what is Paul Lynn really like? Oh, everybody asked me that. He's a very honest woman. <laughs> Just kidding, Paul. <laughs> you had a Paul knows how to take a joke. You had a, does he? Oh, really, yes. <laughs> I feel around him sometimes when he didn't. I, oh, please. I Listen, I heard you had a very funny, funny time with him one time when they did a, uh, uh, you do a question and answer kind of thing from the audience with Hollywood Squares all the time. You want to tell everybody about that? On Squares? On Squares. What was that with the, uh... You're the, the man with Peoria. Peoria. I'm so, I don't remember that. What happened? You said that somebody, you were d in the middle of a Q&A thing, and a man said something from the audience and asked if you remembered it. Oh, no, that was in, that was in Washington oh. when I was on stage. We ask, I always ask for questions out of the audience. And I got one about Paul, and I went on about him being very honest and everything. I did a whole thing, and then this guy stood up and says, Hey, madam, remember the night I fucked you in Baltimore? I said, remember it. I'm trying to forget it. <laughs> Listen, you guys have both got to come back time and time again. Please, we miss you desperately. All right, thank okay? you. Okay? I love you. Thank you. Want a kiss? Woo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs>